Located approximately 16 miles east of the capital city is the community of Enmore, East Coast Demerara. A quiet but bustling countryside village is home to 4,500 households and is typified by its warm and industrious inhabitants. Enmore has, in its very own unique way, evolved with the changing times, its residents embracing innovation and building on the gains made by past generations. Yet, it provides a solace for many who crave a peaceful countryside bout of relaxation from the hassle of the fast-paced urban life. Like any flourishing neighborhood, expansion, modernization, and development is quite evident. More residents have become homeowners over the past three decades, young men and women are looking beyond the traditional means of employment, and the community, for the most part, has become fairly self-sufficient. But in the midst of the economic and social advancement lies discernible symbols of a bygone era, one molded by the significant impact of sugar and the bitter stories that shape the inescapable sweetness associated with the iconic sugarcane. On June 16, 1948, five sugar workers were brutally murdered by colonial police during protest action at Plantation and more. Several decades later, a monument in the community stands as a symbol of their struggles for better working conditions. The Enmore Martyrs Monument was designed by renowned Guyanese artist Dr. Dennis Williams and constructed by Zenith Industrial and Construction Co-op Society in 1976 on behalf of the government of Guyana. The following year, on June 16, 1977, it was unveiled by the former Prime Minister of Guyana, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham. About a minute drive heading south along what is popularly known as Flower Road or Estate Road is a historic structure at the very end, one that has been, in more ways than one, a great source of independence, economic empowerment, camaraderie, social growth, and community advancement. The Enmore Sugar Estate is undoubtedly the single most influential institution in the community. And it was on this turf that a most tragic event unfolded, one that sparked countrywide outrage and almost instantaneously ignited a political fight for freedom from what was labeled as bondage and exploitation. Early on the morning of June 16, a crowd of about 400 had gathered outside the Enmore Estate factory for a protest and picketing exercise. Management of the estate became aware of the situation and had informed the police the evening before. By 10 hours on that fateful day, a crowd of about five to 600 people had gathered outside the Enmore estate, led by one of the workers carrying a red flag. The workers attempted to enter the factory compound through the gates and through two trench gaps at the rear by which punts entered the factory. But they were prevented from doing so because the locked gates and the punt gaps were protected by policemen. A section of the crowd then hurled bricks and sticks at the policemen, and several persons managed to enter the compound on the rear of the factory. The policemen tried to push back the advancing crowd, but after this effort failed, they opened fire. The result? Five workers dead, 14 others injured. Lalabaji Kisun, 30 years old, was shot in the back. 19-year-old Puran was shot in the leg and pelvis. Rambaran died from bullet wounds to his leg. Suraj Bali died in hospital later that day, and Hari died the following day from several spinal injuries. These men, through the years, became known as the Enmo Martyrs. On April 22, 1948, nearly 1,200 estate workers from plantations Enmore, Numperel, Lusignan, Monripo, Labon Intention, Vrijslust, and Ogle initiated strike action to express their disapproval of the cotton load system and the unfair methods of measuring work productivity. The cotton load system, which forced cane cutters to load the sugar punts with the cane they cut, was not popular among cane cutters. It was introduced in 1945, and from time to time, workers had gone on strike to demand that it should be changed. 
As part of the demands of the 1948 strike, the cane cutters called for the replacement of the cotton load with a cotton drop system by which the cane cutters should cut the cane, but other workers would load the cut cane into the ponds for shipment to the factory. In addition to this particular issue, the workers demanded higher wages and improved living conditions on the sugar estates. However, the real aim of the strike was to demand recognition of the Guyana Industrial Workers' Union as the bargaining union for the field and factory workers on all the sugar estates in the country. Guyanese historian Tota Mangar has written extensively on the Enmore Martyrs. He labeled the events of June 16, 1948 as a rather unfortunate situation and one that ought not to have happened. But one ought to realize that the sugar plantation historically was always seen as a center of oppression, cruelty and oppression from the period of slavery and well into the indentureship period. Um, the sugar plantation was where the expatriate conducted their economic business harshly, cruelly, very unjustly. And so it was, there was a stigma attached to the plantation. The Guyana Industrial Workers' Union later became the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers' Union, GAU, gaining recognition in 1976. Its current president, C. Paul Narain, described June 16 a red-letter day in the history of the country. That event changed the course of Guyana and it ignited the independence movement. Um, people became more conscious. Um, previous to the Enmore Martyrs, you had workers being shot at Esequibo, Romvelt, all over the country. Uh, that was the last massacre. After that, you had Kausilia in 1964. Um, but it was significant because the Enmore Martyrs um, incident took place just after the formation of the GIW, Guyana Industrial Workers Union. Um, at that time, the MPC, Manpower Citizens Association, had been the recognized union. Workers were dissatisfied and they were calling for a new union. Hence the formation of the Guyana Industrial Workers Union, which later evolved into GAU. So, one, you had the consciousness being raised in the country for independence. You had the will to get a union of the workers' choice. There were other grouses among the workers. For one, they felt that the union at the time, the Manpower Citizens Association, that union was not doing enough to represent them. They perceived that union as a company union, siding with the company at that time was the Sugar Producers Association. Now the company, right. since nationalization, is Gaisuko. So they had that problem with the union and what had happened early in 1948, a new union was born called the Guyana Industrial Workers Union. That's the forerunner of GAU, mm -hmm. which is currently today. So at the time when they went on strike, starting towards the end of April 8, 1948, they felt that by striking, they would also force the Sugar Producers Association to at least mm -hmm. recognize their, the union of their choice. Central Committee member of the People's Progressive Party, Haider Ali, said the events that led to the Enmore Martyrs is a defining moment in Guyana's political history. It was that moment, he stressed, that acted as a catalyst for the formation of the People's Progressive Party led by the indomitable Cherry Jagan. And Dr. Jagan and his wife Janet and other leaders of the then GIWU, Guyana Industrial Workers Union, now GAWU. They played a key role in the workers' struggle in those days for a better quality of life. And the Enmore Martyrs has to be seen in the context of an even larger struggle that was taking place at the time. 
And it's significant that we are talking about, about the Enmore Martyrs at this particular time because it was also in the month of November that the PAC was formed. The PAC is what is referred to as the Political Affairs Committee and it was formed in 1946, just two years before the Enmore Martyrs um, that uh, the workers were killed. <clears throat> so the PSC, I would say, marked the new beginning of a political era, I would say, because it was the PSC that really started to lay the groundwork, as it were, for the workers' um, struggle in an organized way, and to take that struggle to a higher, higher level of, at the political level. The PSC was formed in 1946, and the founding members were Dr. Jagan, his wife Janet, H. G. M. Howard, and Ashton Chase. This is the gravesite of the Enmore Martyrs. A wreath-laying ceremony is held here annually at the Lirapentier Cemetery as a mark of respect for the five slain workers. It is here that Dr. Cherry Jagan made a silent pledge that he would devote his life to freeing his people from exploitation. Dr. Jagan had led the funeral march of the workers from Enmore to the cemetery miles away in the city. Dr. Jagan was accompanied at the forefront of the march by leaders of the Political Affairs Committee and the Guyana Industrial Workers Union. The tragedy and the ultimate sacrifice of these sugar workers greatly influenced Dr. Jagan's political philosophy and outlook. Those stories are documented in one of his most outstanding publications, The Western Trial, My Fight for Guyana's Freedom, as articulated by the chairman of the Cherry Jagan Research Center. The Enmore tragedy affected me greatly. I was personally acquainted with all the young men killed and injured. The funeral procession, which was led by my wife, other leaders and myself to the city, 16 miles away, became a tremendous mass protest demonstration. At the gravesite, the emotional outbursts of the widows and relatives of the deceased had been intensely distressing. And I could, with difficulty, restrain my tears. There was to be no turning back. There and then, I made a silent pledge. I would dedicate my entire life to the cause of the struggle of the Guyanese people against bondage and exploitation." End of quote. Well, that is actually what he said. And from then on, he entered parliament. He, as early as 1947, he was a parliamentarian, even before the formation of the People's Progressive Party. And in parliament, he ensured, he advocated for the workers. And he advocated so strongly that after a time, he became an anti-colonial fighter. He was recognized internationally as an anti-colonial fighter, struggling for workers' rights and for the working class. The, the workers were, were not violent. They didn't go there armed with cutlass and, and things to create. Yeah, yes, they were there for a peaceful protest against, as I said before, uh, the cotton load system. And um, the day before the um, killing took place, the management of the Enmore estate summoned police uh, six police came, well armed, um, because they anticipated that there would be a, a big turnout. And, and so, and what the workers were attempting to, to do was what will take place in any industrial setting. Protests, um, agitation for a better condition. And while that was taking place, the police used life ammunition, shot the workers, killing five and injuring I think over 15 or 70. Some of them were crippled for life. After the tragedy took place, the British 
and the colonial administration did um, put in place a commission to investigate what took place. And the commission found they were in support of the shooting, okay? Although they felt that um, the police could have restrained themselves a little, but they, but they justified what took place. In fact, Dr. Jagan and um, his wife and the union people didn't even appear before the commission because they realized that that was just a whitewash, what took place. The Enmore tragedy led to significant improvements. One, you had the Venn Commission. The Venn Commission recommended the movement from the logies to the housing scheme. So it was out of Enmore's struggle that you had the housing schemes being developed by the Sugar Industry Labor Welfare Fund. In fact, they had the formation of that fund where they had the welfare part, they had a part to look at price stabilization as well. So, because at times, you know, the prices would have gone down in, the, in terms of the for sugar. And what had happened there, there was a levy that was implemented for every ton of sugar sold. And then the part will go towards assisting workers. So you have all these schemes in the country um, around the sugar estates that evolved out of that struggle. You had conditions of work um, also being improved because you had women workers working crossing trenches and so on. So the Venn Commission abolished that. And also you had at that time, um, you had people using the water from the trenches that had the latrines over there. And then there was the move to have, you know, portable water. And all these things evolved from that. And then over the years, um, Gao continued in the struggle. Um, we got recognition until in 1976. And from 76 to now, there has been significant improvement all towards the achievement by Gao and our struggle over the years. So now that the industry is operating and you have new laws like occupational safety and health after and so on, all these things have come into place and conditions have indeed improved. They paid a supreme sacrifice, right. sacrificing right. their lives. But the cause was, ju was just, and because of that, so many gains were achieved, so many things were achieved after 1948. I can safely say that they did not find, um, die in vain. Recognition of the union, improved wages and salaries, uh, improved conditions of work, improvement in housing, medical facilities, transportation facilities, all these are gains, so they did not die in vain. And uh, uh, they inspired workers generally to continue the struggle for betterment and for a better Guyana. They would have um, laid that foundation to advance the working class struggle in very profound ways. Following the, um, the, the, the shooting of the workers, a lot of developments um, took place. And even though it came a bit late, but the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union was eventually recognized, I think it was uh, 1976, under the uh, Burnham regime. But it didn't come about easily. And I am saying that that struggle of the Enmore Martyrs along with several other struggles later on by the GAU, would have um, led to the recognition of the GIW, now GAU, that the workers were demanding at the time. I cannot stop short of agreeing with that. It's so true because um, it changed the landscape of our country. And like I said in the beginning, it fired the independence movement. 
and you know Guyanese owe our independence to those five comrades who passed away. They did not die in vain. And um, the fact that they were brutally killed um, opened the eyes of many. And you know, um, our struggle became stronger. Um, the PVP was formed and you know, it, it went to a different level because it was it was the PVP with Dr. Jagan and at that time Forbes Burnham, um, you know, who really carried the, um, the struggle for, for a free Guyana. And, um, you know, colonialism has its own shackles and we were able to break away because of the Enmore Martyrs incident.